Hi, this is Lizzie Lundgren. I am a member of the Geoschem support team, and this tutorial is going to be on GitHub notifications. So I'm going to walk you through how you can sign up to get notified about changes in Geoschem and how to customize those notifications so that they best suit your needs. Because I know not everybody wants to get inundated with every single update that goes into Geoschem, but every now and then there's going to be a bug that might, um, might affect your work. And it would be great if you could be notified of that. Also new releases, things like that. So here we are on my GitHub page. This is the dashboard. If you don't have a GitHub account, you should definitely create one. They're free. Once you do that, you can sign up for notifications as well as, as do a whole bunch of other stuff like making a Geoschem fork and pushing your updates there. Um, so to get to the dashboard, if you do have a GitHub account, you can click this uh, thing in the upper left corner. It'll take you here. It'll show repositories that you have. Um, what I'm going to start with is watching one repository, and then you can then apply that to any repository. But let's start with the Geoschem repository. So the location of that is Geoschem slash Geoschem with a dash. If I click here and look in the upper right corner where I'm circling here, it says unwatch. This is what's going to tell you if you are watching or not watching the repository. If I click here to get the drop down menu, I see there's four different options for notifications. I'm doing watching, which notifies me of all conversations. And I do that because I'm on the support team, so I know I want to know about everything that's happening with Geoschem. Uh, there are other options, though, because we realize not everybody wants to do that. You can do not watching when this means that you're notified when somebody mentions you. So if somebody has a comment in an issue or a pull request and they do it at symbol with your GitHub username, then you'll get notified. Um, this also uh, gives you notifications if you're participating, which means if you make a comment on an issue or you make a comment on a pull request, then it will automatically subscribe you to that thread and you will get subsequent messages. Uh, if you, that's too much for you, you can do releases only. This means every time we release a new version of Geoschem, such as 12.6.2, which we just released, uh, any future updates, then you will get notified. This also includes the participating or the at mentioned, which I just discussed. Um, I already talked about watching. Ignoring, this means you'll get nothing. We don't really recommend this. Um, if you take the time to use the Geoschem repositories, I would say at least sign up to get notifications when you're mentioned, because otherwise you might enter a conversation without knowing about it. And oftentimes people use the at symbol to get the attention of a user because it might relate to you um, things like that. So don't recommend ignoring. Okay, so I am watching the repository. Also right next to it, I can see 15. I know that there are 15 people watching this repo. You can actually see who they are, which is kind of fun. Um, but moving along. Okay, so now that we know all what all that stuff is, uh, if you want to subscribe or unsubscribe from specific conversations of a repository that you're watching or maybe not watching, but say you get an update because you were mentioned um, and you see that you're automatically subscribed to it because you were mentioned, but you don't actually want to subscribe to it. So you do have the capability of unsubscribing. So let's see, let's go to uh, the issues page. Um, this is actually gonna apply to both issues and pull requests, but we'll start by looking at an issue. Uh, if I pick this first issue here, that's open, and I click on it, then over here on the right side, down this, this little sidebar, I can see a notification section. 
here I can toggle between subscribing and unsubscribing and it gives a little notification about what that means. So currently I'm subscribed to this issue. I'm subscribed to all issues, so that's why. Um, but if I choose to unsubscribe, it gives me the option to subscribe again. There's also this option to customize the notifications. And if I click here, I see the two options I've already saw, not subscribed and subscribed. Uh, do notice that for not subscribed, I'll still get notified if I'm mentioned in the thread in the future. So I can tune out of this thread until I have an interest because somebody mentions me to get my attention or something. Um, there is this custom option as well where I can unsubscribe, but I will get notified if the thread is closed. So if this issue is fixed and it's closed, then I'll get a notification. After that, if somebody reopens it because it turned out to maybe that's still a problem, I'll also get a notification. So this is really useful if you don't want to follow the entire thread, but you do have an interest in, say, this bug fix that you know there's an open issue on and you really want to know when it's fixed, uh, then you'll get this notification. And then when you get that notification, you can actually click on a link in the email. It'll take you to the page and then you'll be able to read through, okay, what was the fix? What version did this go into? Things like that. Uh, pretty useful. Um, and it's, so it's really handy to have these GitHub notifications so you can do that kind of thing. Uh, cancel. Okay, so that's uh, what it looks like for a specific issue. It's very similar for pull requests. Uh, in case you don't know what pull requests are, that's when somebody writes code that they want to go into Geos Chem, and then they do a pull request, which is basically requesting us and the support team to pull their updates into the standard model. Um, so let me look in this pull request here. Click on this. Okay. Uh, if you go down this sidebar, it's got the same thing. It's got notifications. You can subscribe, unsubscribe. Okay, so there are some additional options. Um, I've been talking about notifications in email. You don't actually have to get it only in email. You can also do web notifications or both web notifications and email. And the way you set that is uh, global, actually, for all of your repositories that you're watching. If you go up to the right-hand corner, um, this icon here is the picture for me. Uh, might be something different for you, of course. And if you uh, drop down, go down to settings, and then over on the right, go over to notifications. And here there's all these toggles for how to set specific things about your notifications. So for example, um, if you're given push access to a repository, which you won't for Geos Chem, but maybe for something else you will, if you're collaborating with somebody, you can set it up to automatically watch that repository. Um, if you choose the participating option for watching a repo, which is that option where you get notified if you were mentioned or if you comment on an issue, then you'll automatically get, um, you'll automatically become participating. Um, you can set email or web and mobile. Uh, same for watching, email or web. Uh, I'm gonna skip some of these because they're, uh, you can read about the, them if you're interested in the really advanced options, but I'm gonna focus in on the ones that I think are probably most useful to the usual Geos Chem users. Um, down here, this is where you're gonna set your, your notification email. Uh, I actually have a few set here, but I, I choose to get it through my um, public Geos Chem email address. And you can definitely change this though if you want to set it somewhere else. Like if you change it later, that's fine. Um, then you can choose what email updates you get. Be, uh, so for any repo that you're watching or participating in, you don't have to get every single email. So here you can toggle on and off comments on issues and pull requests. You'll always get a notification when there's like the first issue and the first pull request, but then subsequent comments you can actually opt out of. So for pull requests, there's some extra features beyond issues, reviews, um, pushes to pull requests. 
And also by default, uh, I believe by default, these are all like unchecked. Um, but I checked it so that I would also get emailed for my own updates. So if I make a comment on an issue, it will appear in my inbox. So then I have a, a full thread of an issue in my inbox. Uh, finally, down here, you can update. Uh, this is based on organizations. This is probably more advanced. But if you do end up participating in organizations, where you're going to have push privileges, you can set different emails for different organizations. All right, so those are the global notifications. Then you have a few more options based on repository. And as I said, you can watch some repositories and do various things like that. And the way you can edit those settings, rather than go into each repository, which is uh, pretty annoying and can be kind of hard if you have a lot of repositories. You can go up to this bell icon up here, which is the notifications icon, and it's going to take you to this page and go to this tab watching. And this is going to list all of the different repositories um, based on the setting you have for watching. So for example, down here, I've got some repos that I'm watching that are release only, a uh, whole bunch up here that I'm fully watching, and I should probably update these because I don't really need to watch all of these. So you can just go over to the right and change it uh, to releases only, for example, and you can unwatch all, things like that. Um, and also notice there's this handy link here to change notifica notification um, settings, which we were just at. So that's another way to get there. There's also this tab for notifications, which is where all of my web notifications get sent. So I have it set so I get it both web and email, so I pretty much never come in here. Um, but I definitely could, and it's worth noting that even though I haven't come in here, I actually have a whole bunch of red messages. And that's because my email syncs with GitHub. So when I read my GitHub notification on the web, it sends to GitHub that that uh, notification has been sent. Um, so you can see I haven't read quite a lot of these, but um, that is a useful feature. One caveat, however, is your email client can only do this if it can read the images that GitHub sends in the emails. So if you have a text-based email client, this might not actually work. But if you have Gmail or Outlook, then this should definitely work for you. All right, let's see what else. The other thing that you're probably going to want to do if you decide to watch a repository and get all of the messages is filter your emails. Uh, this is especially true if you have multiple repositories, you can filter them into different repositories. You can filter it so that you only get the issues and don't get the pull requests. There are different ways of doing this. Um, and it varies based on the email client, but the way we've set up the Geoschem uh, issues facilitate this ability to filter. So if you go to the Geoschem issues and create a new issue, you have several options. These are templates for creating a new issue. And each template is going to automatically put a string into the subject line. And you can use that string to filter in your email. So for example, ask a question about Geoschem. When I create this issue, it automatically has this string question in brackets. And from there, I should um, put my actual issue subject line. I believe Bob has a separate tutorial on how to do all this. So um, make sure you do not delete that first string, because that will probably mess up the filtering that other people set up. Uh, the ones that people are probably most interested in are the bugs. So you would filter your email for a bug slash issue. 
Um, that can't be the only thing in your email, obviously, in your email filter, because you have to know it's coming from this repository. So the way to do that is to include in the to field in your filter the repository name at noreply.github.com. Uh, I actually have a screenshot of an email notification. Um, let's see. This one. Yeah. So I clicked on the to field here, and you can see that this is from geoschem at noreply.github.com. So you can do that with any repository, and that's the best way um, to filter for a given repository. And then you can add the string on top of that if you want to further filter. And then the notification itself has a bunch of other stuff, which is pretty useful because you don't always have to go to GitHub to, to change your settings. At the very bottom of the notification, it actually says, reply to this email directly, view it on GitHub, or unsubscribe. It's true, you can actually reply to the email directly um, and it will automatically go to GitHub and automatically get sent to everybody who gets the notifications. I don't really recommend this, however, because in my experience, I found that some people go into GitHub and actually edit their, um, their comments. So, for example, somebody might create an issue and then later, rather than put a comment on the new issue, they might edit that. And that editing is not actually going to get sent as a notification. So you might be replying to this email and you might not have an up-to-date awareness of the status of the issue. So I would recommend instead clicking this link, view it on GitHub. That'll take you directly to the issue. You can scan through the thread, make sure the last one is what you expect, and then comment on it there. If you get an email, a notification of a new issue, and you're really like, I don't care about this at all, you can click this unsubscribe. You won't get anything else. I believe you will still get a notification if you're mentioned. And still, if you go into GitHub later and you add a comment, I think you'll automatically get subscribed again. Um, but you can unsubscribe directly from the email, which is pretty useful. And do note, you are not unsubscribing from watching the repository. You're only unsubscribing from this one thread, either an issue or a pull request. All right, I, I think that's it for GitHub issues. Um, if you have any questions, please do contact the Geoschem support team. I hope that I covered everything that would be useful to you here. Uh, but we're certainly open to questions. Uh, suggestions like if if you want more advanced options we could definitely have a second tutorial eventually but I think this should cover everything that you would want to do at least with Geos Chem so uh, thanks for listening bye